Good morning, and thank you for joining me at Sharing Recipes. Um, it's become more than just about food and cooking. It's become just me sharing with you guys my recipes for my life. And I mean, maybe you try them and they work for you, and maybe they don't, but at least you have a, a place that you can share and um, be creative and have ideas and a place for me to have some way to reach out and touch everybody. So my um, tip for today for sharing recipes of life. During times like this, it's even more important. Hold on, I gotta take a sip of coffee. Mm. It's so good. During times like this, it's even more important to take time and remember to appreciate the positive things that God has given you in life. I love watching the sun come up in the morning. That's my positive theme that I think of every day. Second, first, every morning when I open my eyes and I see my kids, I see my mom, that's a blessing for me. That's a blessing for me. I never take it for granted because I'm, I'm a person that has lost people in my life. And so I mean, I know we all have, we all have. And so it's, and when that happens, we know that life is short. And if you, if you are a believer in God, you know that he's in control. And when it's time for you to go, he will call you home. If you survive through everything that's going on, it's because your work here isn't done. That's the positive way of looking at it. To anybody out there that has lost someone due to the current epidemic, you and your family are in my prayers I pray for God to cover you. I pray for God to give you healing, emotionally, spiritually, physically, because I can only imagine the toll that it's taken on your bodies. And those of you that have had it and survived You are warriors. You are warriors. I look forward to finding videos out there that uh, ha have survivors and hear their stories because this, this disease, this virus that's going around, it's different, y'all. It, it has no limits to who it, it, it can get to. I saw a video of a lady that was quarantined for three weeks in her home and she still got it. <laughs> Be safe when you're out and about. Wear a mask. If you have gloves, wear gloves. If you don't have gloves, carry hand sanitizer with you. I believe in God, I put my life in his hands and I know that he is in control. But like my pastor tells us, don't be no fool. <laughs> All right, God has also given us the, 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 capable, the capability of making choices, you know? And I know that common sense ain't always so common. I'm learning that as I've gotten older. So I'm out here to tell you that if you're still not taking this seriously and 
when you leave the confinements of your home, even walking from your house to your car, you should have your mask. Because what if somebody comes up to you? You just don't know. Walking from your car to the store, in the store. And don't be afraid to mention to somebody that, hey, for your safety, you should have a mask on. I mean, because I got a mask on. So at this point, I'm not worried about breathing in any coronavirus dust. <clears throat> it's not dust, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just, oh, so what was that? Was that a simile or a metaphor? Leave it in the comments and let me know. Um, but yeah, so I just, early morning, watch the sun come up, drink my coffee, get my mind right. Does my kids still be asleep? My mom be working during the week, on the weekends. She may be asleep or she's up and that's time for us to talk and um, she's like my one of my best friends. So that gives us an opportunity to spend time together. Right now is not a time where you should be stressing about things that aren't in your control. The other thing I want to speak on is I'm, I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher for 17 years. I've worked in the school industry for 17 years. Let me correct that. I've actually been teaching in the classroom for 10. Seven of those years were dedicated to uh, special education students. And I love it. I do. I love the interaction with the children. I love watching them grow up. I love watching them progress. I love watching them succeed. I love seeing them grow up and come back and work for the school or um, come back and tell you how they're doing and thanks to you that they're blah, 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 blah. I love it. I, I do. That's why I do it. But I'm gonna be honest. It's all the rest of the stuff outside of that that I can't do anymore. So I have some decisions to make. But um, yeah, that's why I'm a big advocate for homeschool. And you'll see a lot of the way I do it is unconventional as it should be. Homeschool should be shaped toward your children's personality first and needs. Educational level. I mean, homeschool is really the only way that you can guarantee individualized one-on-one -on -one small group instruction. And it's grown so much to have so like co-ops and things. And now with us not being able to really interact, they got virtual ones. So um, stop trying to make home, which remember home for kids and for us should be a, a safe place where we can relax, a safe place where we can let ourselves, let, let our hair down and be ourselves. Not a place where we come and we have to be stressed for a part of the day. I, I, I guess part of the reason I can say this is because I spent from the time my kids started going to school every day consistently instilling the importance of academics and education. And Yes, I helped them when they were little, but once they got to, so my son will be in second grade. Well, I stopped helping him in kindergarten because he didn't need no help. <laughs> but my daughter, second grade, third grade, I started to taper off and back off because it's really important to make sure that kids understand how important their education is. 
And if you don't give them the opportunity to be responsible for it and take ownership of it, then they never will have really any motivation. It has to be internal motivation. It shouldn't always be external. I do do stuff for my baby. Don't get me wrong. She's spoiled, as she should be. She works hard to make A's and B's, <laughs> okay? And if she has a C, she comes and talks to me about it. We plan, we, you know, we come up with a plan of action. She, she emails her instructors. I don't contact them unless I feel like it's a moment I need to step in, which hasn't had to happen because she's responsible. I don't have to worry about that. And I started her young, and now she's acing college classes and high school classes, and she'll have a high school degree and an associate's degree by the time she's done. <laughs> so I'm so excited for her. I'm, I'm a proud mama, if you can't tell. Very proud mama. Um, so, I mean, I could keep going, but the lesson that I hope that you all get from this today is take time to enjoy the blessings and the things and the positives to, to every side of every day. Because that's the only way you're going to get through it. Faith first. Prayer. Hope. And remembrance that life on earth is temporary. So every day should be a special day. Every day should be an important day. Every day I hug my kids. Every day I kiss my kids. Every day we laugh. Every day we talk. Every day we play something together. I spend time with my children. We cook together. We do things together. Because for me, if I was to go tomorrow, I want those to be the last memories, not the stress of school. So that's just the honesty of how I see it. Thank you guys again for joining me at um, Sharing Recipes, which is not just about our connection through food, but also through life. I will just be sharing with you my recipes for my life. And I hope that some of it helps you and some of it inspires you um, and gives you some type of just place where you can connect because you're not alone. Never forget you're alone. Notice that my uh, channel has a, ha has a semicolon. And for anybody out there that suffers from mental illness, whether it be depression, anxiety, stress, PTSD, and so on and so forth, semicolon represents that your story <clears throat> is not over, it's not done, it's not finished. An author uses a semicolon to let the, the reader know that he still got a little bit more left to say. So for you out there that, I hope that seeing that when you're watching my channel, you know that I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about you. Somebody's thinking about you. Somebody cares about you. Somebody loves you. Besides God, of course. God loves you all the time, always. You're always on his mind. You're always on his art. Even if you, may not feel be feeling him right now he's always feeling you and so am i so thank you for joining me today at sharing recipes which is just not about food but it's sharing recipes of life and i hope that uh we can all connect thank you for joining me don't forget to hit subscribe my mom and i as of yesterday have been able to donate over 300 masks for free to our um, surrounding neighborhoods in DeSoto, Red Oak, Ovilla, Green, Glen Heights, Lancaster. And um, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going until we stop getting requests. I posted on my Facebook and I, be men I mentioned it on my channel a couple of times that, you know, uh, 
our goal is to help us help you help the world and the only way we can do that is by all of us staying covered god is covering us from afar he's covering us from right here he's covering us from right there he's covering us from everywhere and my mom and i are trying to have you covered from right here <laughs> i love you all be blessed I support the stay at home movement and I hope that you too be be safe. Peace out.